Welcome, everybody, to Midday Magazine for this Wednesday, October 16th, 2024. I have your host, James J. Mayloff, here. In part two today, we're going to speak with our friends from Wisconsin Rapids Community Theater. We got the Silver Foxes in. We're going to talk with Chris, Linda, Tronda about Let the Spirit Move You. Looking forward to that. Right now, I've been looking forward to it all week. We have our good friend, Mayor Matt Zacker of Wisconsin Rapids in with us right now. Matt, it's good to see you. Good to see you, James. Thanks for having me again, as always. Appreciate you being here and appreciate our friends over at Wisconsin Rapids Community Theater. Say a thank you to them. Do yourself a favor, go to YouTube, type into your search bar, Wisconsin Rapids Community Theater, like their page, keep up to date on the great work they are doing over there. Matt, uh, how you doing? How's things been? Uh, doing well. Uh, we just spent, uh, uh, still in the middle of the budget season, so this is my first time around being, uh, I don't know if I say on the inside, you know, but really really being a part of the nuts and bolts and, and understanding better uh, how it goes and how it all comes together. Uh, and then you start to chip away at it, uh, you know, to try to get it down to the where the numbers uh, become uh, more equalized of what's coming in and what's going out. Uh, we've had a couple of big, big things happen that are coming down the pipeline that I'm sure the folks would be interested in hearing about. Um, you know, we did give some uh, some uh, hefty uh, raises last year in terms of uh, a step system and, and trying to put people in the place and get them in line with with where the uh, market rates are, uh, but also gave them another bump with uh, the aldermen. We voted on uh, uh, giving them, a, a you know, if they've been there for a long time, uh, according to those years, another bonus that way. Mm-hmm. That's all great, and we want to take care of the employees and, and let them know that we appreciate the work that they do, but at the same time, you got to pay for it still. So so you got to find that in the budget, and uh, so we had to work on that. Uh, another big thing is that the uh, transportation utility um, – has been challenged uh, in a different court system uh, down in Pewaukee, uh, similar to what we had. So right now we're uh, choosing to, because it was it was ruled as legal by the local, and then it was a, the appellate court or appeals court turned it over and mm-hmm. said it wasn't legal, and then mm-hmm. they sent it to the state and said that uh, they weren't going to take it up. So it went mm-hmm. back to the appeals court and stayed in that realm for right now anyways. Mm-hmm. Um, so we did the safe thing right now and uh, and uh, put it on hold. Uh, right. So we're working on other ways to, because okay. we don't want to go back to special assessments. We worked really, really hard to, to take that burden off the people as the prices go up and up and you're paying, you know, half the price of your house to get the roads done outside. It just wasn't really fair anymore. Mm-hmm. So we tried to spread that out quite a bit. And uh, so that's been another part of trying to get the money to equalize and, and, and work our way through. And, and then, of course, at the end of it all, you got to pay for the roads and make sure you got money for the new roads and the, the utilities underneath those. And then the mill and overlay where we're grinding it up and putting down new stuff right away and also the chip and seal. So it, it's all coming together, though, but it's definitely uh, – Definitely a stressful time for everybody involved. Um, a couple of questions regarding the budget. We'll stay right there for a second. First, uh, just uh, from uh, out your perspective, going into this, you mentioned that uh, you know this is a little bit different being on this side of things. What has been uh, maybe the most surprising part of this for you? Um, that's, that's hard to say. I, I think that is just a, the biggest part is how how big and broad it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, like even I was on the. Uh, um, finance and property committee for two years as chair so i was i'm a part of that yeah, conversation yeah. but really being on the inside of it and really over the last six months just getting to understand how many moving parts there are how many people are involved yeah i think i think that's you know and again <laughs> it's small compared to a lot of things obviously yeah, yeah. but in the in the sense of what i've been through and what the community has to to offer in that sense it's big and it's important uh, i do you know throw a lot of uh appreciation out to all the department heads and all the workers that are in in the the government itself that are making this work and i know we'd like to you know take our shots at them and again they're they're doing their job and and uh, they're they for the most part everyone takes a great pride in what they're doing and and they should and and we should appreciate that keeping the keeping our city together and moving forward and progressing and uh, my job, in turn, is to is to help everybody see that you know a little more clearly and and get everybody more on the same page and 
keep some of that uh, cool down. Uh, some people you can't you can't win over because it's, <laughs> oh, yeah. it's kind of part of who they are to complain about the government. So I yeah. understand it. I've been there too myself. So. Right. Uh, as my uh, my papa used to always say uh, that uh, one political party could have the cure for cancer and charge a dollar. The other one would say they're charging too much. Yeah. yeah there's yeah. some people you're never yeah. going to be able to please everybody kind right. of thing. Um, and, and, and I'm glad you brought up these department heads and, and how important they are in all of this too because uh, while well, uh, most of uh, everybody out there knows what it's like to deal with a budget uh, on this level is so different and you know we have to think about okay not just today but tomorrow with for you and these department heads it's such on such a different level that I don't, if you haven't done the job I don't know that you can really understand to your point about you hadn't been at this position before mm-hmm. and everything and to the listener out there having some empathy for these positions and some understanding of what it takes to do these jobs yeah. um, that's a whole different ball game to deal with when you got to it's not just right now you got to think about you have to think about the the next year the next month and all these other steps yeah. and it's not just you it's your neighbors it's it's people you know other people in the community new people in the community there's so many other layers to it yeah i uh, appreciate that people are you know we're really looking into now like taking it 10 10 15 20 years down the road and yeah. saying okay we these are the same streets we're landlocked by all the other communities we know we have development development that we want to do and that we can do um, let's really try to organize what we have and have a plan a, a really long-term plan to on the capital improvements and what that takes and then all the machinery that it's going to take because you do have to rotate the machinery through mm-hmm. um, but it's expensive and it's only going to get more expensive so it's uh you know it is a it's uh, all moving very fast, but at the same time thinking ahead, and I appreciate that everybody's working with uh, with each other to do that. To the audio outs, uh, audio audience out there, uh, we have the last fly in Rapids in this room right now, and he's just bugging the daylights out of you, man. <laughs> he's like, well, that leave right. you alone. I can handle he's, it. He was messing with me earlier <laughs> yeah. during the morning show. So, uh, recently meeting, uh, recently we had meetings to discuss the city's downtown revitalization. Had some great meetings. Heard some great feedback from the community on this one. A shout out to Kyle and the gang and everybody that was a part of those. The city asked for residents' ideas, input, and involvement as a part of the downtown master plan. Uh, Updating the master plan, how did that go? Uh, were you able to attend any of those? Yeah, yeah, I did make it in there and went through the the same talks that you know they're giving everybody else to understand better what what they have to offer, how they come to their uh, you know their their master plan, I suppose. And uh, I think it's it's great, you know. In the end, all the ideas are there. Uh, I think the big thing that is always the struggle with this is bringing all the people to the table and getting them to let their guard down enough because a lot of the property downtown is owned by, you know, either private entities or uh, foundations uh, in the city. So in the end, uh, a lot of the drop in the guard and building the bridges and trusting each other enough to say, what's in the best interest of everybody and how can we all get what, a part of what we want uh, in in that picture in order to make progress because otherwise it just sits there and if it just sits there everybody's going to kind of lose hope that something's going to happen eventually and that's not what we want especially at this time when things are happening at the mill and things are possibly happening on the west side with the tracks and you know all these things are kind of in play mm-hmm. i think it's a great time and and this encompasses that whole downtown area to include you know in my mind it's got to include the rafters and the aquatics park and uh and everything that that's a part of that whole area you know it's it's all one community it's uh it's you don't get to see this in politics very often but i think on a local level if you're paying attention you really do uh what uh mayor zacker was doing with the water park and some of those ideas and, and trying to bring in uh, not zacker uh uh, 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 the, uh yeah, yeah uh, so what he was doing uh, was certainly uh, ambitious and and trying some different things and trying to bring in a different economy and some of that uh we have shane come in and, and shane brings uh, an approach that's uh, not only level-headed but uh comes at it in a different angle and kind of gets the books in balance and some of that and you come in and you have a good uh a good uh, foot in both of these worlds in yeah. many ways and an a- yeah. ability to kind of look at both things and everything and all that work that was done before by other mayors and such really plays into what we're trying to do right now in this moment and building on this momentum so it's it's kind of cool to see how that happens like it, it's not as if uh, anybody like four mayors ago they were thinking necessarily about this but at the same time this stuff all ties in together and has a domino effect yeah so where we are right now with i believe kind of piggybacking on what you said there i think we have some real momentum here in our city yeah. with some new businesses coming in along with some business established businesses doing very well and everything 
keeping that momentum going and and looking at new, bringing in new businesses in and everything how is that going and and are you are you you're not asking for necessarily details i know that that's mm-hmm. a whole other thing but are you getting some conversations are you having some meetings about that yeah i think uh again this is what my whole platform was to just to just be a part of as many conversations as possible and wherever i can see a connection build bridges you know i I've talked with the uh, the the people at the PAC and and all the great work they're doing there and how you can tie that into the hotel meet and all the great work they're doing there to bring in tourism and the, the uh, CVB and Meredith and what she's doing. And that ties into the rafters and that ties into the downtown and the bars. And, you know, it's all part of the conversation. So just getting people together and, and just going off of what you said, like being a part of something that is just a continuous flow, like, like with Express Recycling, I was there from almost the beginning, you know, a couple months into it, I got involved. So I kind of knew where it started and how it went. When you get into government, you're handed, you're, you're oh, handed yeah, a yeah. lot. Here you, know, you go. There's 150 yeah, yeah. years of like, you know, decisions and, 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 and ultimately like good feelings and bad feelings. Like I'm dealing a lot with old, I, I say this with the utmost, uh, you know, uh, concern, I guess, but like, mm or good, goodwill, but there's a lot of hard feelings out there in the community sure. with this person versus that or this community versus yeah. that. And I've had nothing to do with any of this stuff. Mm. So it's my job now, I take it on as a personal mission to to uh, try to make some of that go away and heal so that we can kind of see that we are one big community and we do have to communicate with each other and we do have to look for long-term solutions to, to big problems such as, you know, EMS services and how we're going to play that all out because everybody needs it. The, the population is still growing in terms of all those folks that need it and the, the, the health system is struggling. So it's there's some big questions on the table and we need some big solutions. We're speaking of the Wisconsin Rapids Mayor Matt Zacker along with our friends from Wisconsin Rapids Community Media. Um, when it came to the revitalization plan, and those meetings and everything not again looking for details or specifics but did you have uh, some good feedback from the community about ideas and just uh, seeing a good turnout in some of that mm-hmm. yeah i think uh again people people have the properties and they got to come to the table but the ideas that are out there are great and and i i've said this before to you like I have mixed emotions about master plans and all these these plans that come together because in the end you pay a lot of money for a plan and if you don't act, execute anything in the plan then it just kind of sits and collects dust and that's what people you know a lot of people are frustrated about so this is my time to say okay well we have a plan so now we enact the plan and we make it happen you know to the best of our ability and if we actually get some successes out of the plan due to what the conversations were then it's a win and it was worth the money that we spent and everybody will be excited about what's coming and really downtown when you think about you know we we just delayed the Jackson Street project because we were going to work on mm-hmm. that street uh, next year uh, but we're delaying it for a year because of all the things that are happening with the courthouse and and around the courthouse. So they have a plan and there's going to be some property there that can be developed and it's only going to be more valuable after the, this stuff comes together. So, you know, that's a big part of the conversation, not to mention the bridge lighting is going to mm-hmm. be coming up. I think it's, you know, it's going to take a while before that comes through. I think we're going to, we'll be talking to you again about a grand opening, you know, a night to lighten that up and and we'll be promoting that as much as we can just to take pride in it. And, and again, that's all able to happen because we made that a TID district a long time ago. And we we're able to capitalize on some of those uh, withheld taxes to help out with some of those projects. Uh, another one will be the, the big wall that's between on, in Veterans Park there. We're going to have to do some work on that. And that's a big undertaking. And now's the time to do it because that funding is there specifically for these reasons. Otherwise, it wouldn't be there and it would be all debt. You know, so yeah, I appreciate it and got to use it while it's there. So as far as the next step after now that these meetings have wrapped up and everything, is that kind of the next step, uh, the next stage of this is to plan out is the what to do, you know, how we're going to do this and where we're, when we're going to do it and that? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And again, Kyle has most of those details and I, I kind of yeah. let him take the, the front seat on sure. that. But uh, um, yeah, they're going to come together with the overall right plan on. of like all the ideas that they've come together with the stakeholders and then the community and, and kind of put it all together. So it'll be exciting to see. And I look forward to doing that. I look forward more to building the bridges and trying to get these folks together and make stuff happen because that's the fun part.
You mentioned the uh, railroad and, and, and some of the talk about the train system and some of that that was going on. Uh, between that, uh, some of our construction that's being done here in town, how are all these projects going? Everything seems to be going smoothly from my end. Yeah, we ended up getting all the um, all the letters of support that we could possibly get from Port Edwards, School of Port Edwards, uh, Seneca, uh, obviously Rapids, the county, the highway department, the state DOT, CN Railroad, which were two big ones. We actually got Urco uh, to Urco Worldwide to give a letter of support just because they're they're part of that train system that goes out there. And we also got uh, ChemTrade, who is General Chemical up on 12th Avenue, that you know talking to them about possibilities of moving that facility to the industrial park. Uh, so that's big. It would change. It would change that, and it would change that whole corridor there, and be able to open up uh, that for investment, which would be re- really excellent. Um, it's uh, almost surprising because <laughs> yeah, this again, doesn't happen. Yeah, but you know but, this better than I do. It doesn't happen very often that yeah. people are kind of all coming to the table and, and, and pretty much in agreement, it seems like. Yeah, don't get me wrong, though. There, there's still a, there's a, a really lot long done. road to yeah, go. Yeah, yeah so absolutely. I'm excited yeah. that we got to this point, and they, they are at the table for a, a planning grant. So it's a, it's a it's some money to get us all to the table and sit down and say what's possible and how do we do this. And then we still got to agree, and we got to make it all happen. So it's a big if, but I think uh, it's definitely doable, and I think now's the time to do it because the money is there again from the federal government. 30 years ago, if not longer, uh, they talked about putting a new jail in this town, and there were people that thought that was sci-fi, that that wouldn't happen, that that, mm-hmm. that is a far-fetched idea and everything, and yeah. here we are, that this is happening. Yeah. This is how we get to that place. You know, We yeah. start having these conversations now, and it is very encouraging to hear that many people in those different organizations and businesses uh, you know, wanting, being willing to have the conversation. We can't yeah. get to stage two before stage one, so that's, a good, that's good news. That's good no, to hear. Everybody's talking really well, even Wisconsin. And Rapids is, you know, done, you know, a lot of work to get the departments together and really start talking and saying, let's let's overlap here, let's work together and save money, but also come up with good ideas. I mean, we have so many smart, talented, you know, ingenuitive people, so it's great to utilize those resources to the fullest. I uh, wanted to talk about some of the proclamations that you uh, recently uh, had come out. Uh, let, let's touch on these and let the audience know about them. Yeah, so these aren't quite out yet, but I did want to get them out there because I don't know mm. if we touch on them uh, oh, okay. the next Different time time. around. Mm. So I got Community Media Day, and I just wanted to throw a shout out to Joe and Taylor and um, yeah. Angelica, yeah. who is our intern, and uh, yeah. she's doing very well helping us out, and we appreciate that. Uh, and again, they do so much, and they're so talented just in their uh, ability to put together uh, the TV station and, and uh, all the videos that they do. We're doing a lot more. Uh, we just spent some money on re- revamping our studio, and nice. uh, that's going to be great. And we're doing more, setting up more of uh, the ability to crossbreed between maybe a news where you're kind of facing the camera or also just doing a podcast where you're talking to each other. Uh, Kyle and I put one out just to try to get some information out to the community recently, and that worked out well, uh, working out some glitches and just trying to figure some stuff out. So it's good, and I just want them to know that we appreciate what they're doing mm-hmm. in every other community media uh people that are out there helping out their communities and then of course free speech week um between uh, 21st and 27th obviously we all know that we need to cherish and protect free speech no matter what it is and uh so i I appreciate it and i appreciate everybody else being able to have the free speech that we have and the rights that we have and we got to make sure we keep that safe we're very thankful to uh, not only Wisconsin Rabbits Community Media and the decades of uh, service and great work that they have done over there, and certainly our current team that we shout out and appreciate all the time. Um, that That is important not only in our community, but all communities. These oftentimes are not only our our, um, our, our our main sellers, our main mascots for our communities, but also informing people that may not know of certain things otherwise and giving people insight on stuff that they may not know otherwise. There's so many angles. <clears throat> to what they do over there and appreciate that great work. Um, and and it, it's nice to have these proclamations that give us, it's it's an opportunity to highlight these things that we don't always get a chance to. Yeah, That part is great. There's also a white cane proclamation that I put out, which is also, also a great one for the blind folks in our community and just making sure that we support them you know, as they're making their way through life and, and uh, facing challenges that we all face and overcoming hurdles that we all face, you know. So 
uh, some bigger than others. So we appreciate that and just uh, just just being aware, being aware of each other and uh, taking care of each other when we can. Another uh, gray area that we don't always get a chance to highlight and look out for or have some empathy for gives us that opportunity to do that as well. And uh, also, you recently had the Domestic Violence Awareness Month as a proclamation. Um, I am uh, appreciative of that. As I always mention to the audience, I'm on the board at the Family Center. Uh, This is a topic that is very important to me. Um, There is no gray area on this topic for me. There is uh, being on the right side of history and not when it comes to domestic violence. I appreciate that we have a mayor, that we have a community that's um, um, on the right side of history when it comes to this topic. And, and, and it's very thank- appreciative to me that we can talk about these things in an open voice now and, and hopefully do some good work when it comes to this topic. Yeah, I think uh, I appreciate that. I appreciate everything you guys do and everybody that's working hard to make that happen. Uh, you know, my my thoughts on that as I've been, you know, going through it this month is just, you know, really, you know, b- being able to bring it into the open and get the conversation out in the open and making sure we protect those who are who are being abused, mm. uh, but also understanding that that cycle of abuse is also something that we got to focus on and say, like, these these, you know, adults most likely were abused when they were younger or at least witnessed it and they just have it in their in their psyche as in, when they're being brought up that this is this is how we treat people and especially behind closed doors when nobody's watching that's when the worst things happen and we got to get it out in the open and and uh, and attack it from a, a, the most compassionate way possible but with a very a strong standing to say this is not okay yeah we, we can't change the narrative if we don't talk about it yeah you know? uh, well said uh, always appreciate the time matt uh thank you so much for joining us if people have follow questions want to know more uh, and they want to get in touch with you how can they do that um, I do have a cell phone, 715-321-0727. I also have a phone from work. It's 715-315-2925. Yeah, we never call ourselves. That. Yeah, 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 nicely know. done, though. Nicely done. But I do like uh, when people call and, you know, we set up times to go out. So it's the, the, the option's always there to give me a call. And uh, even when people disagree with me, I'd rather uh, have a face-to-face conversation and come to – come to you know some common ground with people so they understand where i'm coming from instead of just you know hating me without understanding why <laughs> right right so. always appreciate the time looking forward to hanging out again next month next month no fly no fly next month <laughs> well, I promise. Well, no fly next month. Appreciate that was fun <laughs> <laughs> thanks for hanging out man appreciate thanks, you man. find out more at wirapids.org wirapids.org and of course follow our friends over at wisconsin rapids community media on social media and on youtube go that throw that in your search bar and keep up to date on all the good work that they are doing over there appreciate them. Appreciate all of you sticking around. We'll have more Midday Magazine coming up for you right here at 97.5 FM, 1320 AM, WFHR, locally grown radio.